contribute our efforts to the improvement of the quality of the life of the people's life, people including everybody. At the same time, to get a good benefit, good return for the shareholder. That's how to do things right. We should, you know, look at the uh, processing itself to identify the opportunities to reduce the uh, carbon emission. Continual strong growth, you know, in the Chinese manufacturing construction in the sectors. That's required, you know, the security of the supplies of the mineral resources or mineral commodity, uh, you know, the products. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one-to-one -one Mining Investment APAC online content session. Today, to um, speak on Chinese, China outbound investment, looking at where the investment is flowing, we have three panelists. So we have Kevin Chen, Vice President of Chifeng Jilong Gold Mining Company. We have George Fang, Executive Vice Chairman of Huayu Cobalt and Greg Pan, President and CEO of Hanking Industrial Group. So thank you everyone for joining me today. And to kick things off, I think it would be really interesting if we could hear just a brief um, introduction from each of our panelists about themselves and their companies. So Kevin, if maybe you want to kick us off. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Amy. And uh, thank you for all for this uh, opportunity to have for this uh, uh, you know, panel discussion uh, with, uh, you know, uh, George and uh, uh, Greg. And uh, we actually, we all, you know, know each other very well. Uh, yeah, so please, uh, first of all, let me brief my uh, 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 self-introduction. Um, I'm a vice president of uh, Chief on Gold, uh, responsible for the company's global expansion and also provide uh, uh, assistance to the operation. Uh, of, uh, you know, companies overseas mines. Before uh, joining uh, uh, Chief on Gold, I had ever worked for uh, Sana Gold, focusing on business development. Uh, and also uh, after uh, my career in uh, Sana Gold, I joined the uh, Standard Bank and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, work in the area of, uh, you know, uh, providing advisory to Chinese company for global MA. Uh, actually, you know, I work, I, I work for George. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, he led me into the global MA area. And I, after Standard Bank, I joined the uh, 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 SOE, it's called uh, China National Gold, as its uh, investment directors uh, to lead the group's uh, uh, overseas MA. Uh, in 2018, I joined the uh, Chief on Gold. Uh, you know, along uh, its acquisition uh, of Sebo Mai, uh, acquired from uh, MMG. So yes, uh, briefly, I, I have uh, uh, around 15 years experience in uh, money industry, uh, focusing on uh, MA. Uh, that's my uh, brief introduction. Great. And George, um, do you want to give us a, a brief introduction to yourself as well? Thank you. Uh, this is George Fang from Zhejiang Huayou Cobalt. So uh, Zhejiang Huayou Cobalt is a uh, high-tech enterprises focus on uh, battery material, R&D and production. So uh, we are in the uh, supply chain of EV industry. So uh, we are one of the leading uh, company to produce casual material, both casual material and precursors. But also, we produce cobalt material as well. Huayo is, in terms of a cobalt uh, refinery products, is a number one in the world. So around 20% market share in the world. And also in terms of a tannery uh, precursor, and the cash flow materials, bio is one of the significant player uh, in this world, both in this world and China. So nowadays we are uh, sitting uh, in the uh, new energy and the EV uh, industry role. My personally, 
before I joined Huayu uh, at the beginning of last year. Before I joined Huayu, I worked in Jijin Mining for five years. So uh, all the work is related to overseas investment and uh, operations overseas, and also strategic issues. Thank you. Great, thank you. And finally, uh, Greg. Oh, thank you, Amy. I thank everyone. Yeah, I really appreciate very much for the opportunity to uh, participate in the panel. And myself, uh, I have over 30 years in mining experiences. And before joining Hanqing, uh, I have been working with Anglo and Goldfield for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, Hanqing uh, is, uh, you know, was started mining 30 years ago. And we started with from iron ore. And then later we expanded to gold and also nickel. So as at the moment, uh, you know, we are, you know, more focused on the nickel, you know, development. And of course, I think we are, you know, uh, you know, seeking as vengeance for our iron ore business too. And we also have the high tech, you know, sectors, which is the micro electronics, uh, mainly focusing uh, on the, uh, you, know, you know, what we call ma in, in MEMS, the uh, in micro mechanics. So, which is already in the, uh, you know, in the final construction, you know, stage. And in addition, we also have some steel, uh, in, uh, you know, factories. And we produce uh, quite a bit of special steels and irons, you know, particularly the, uh, you know, in the forgery eyes. So, it basically, you know, myself uh, has been, uh, you know, president and CEO uh, for Hanking for a long time, you know, since uh, 2004. Actually, and uh, so we are, you know, are not only trying to expand our businesses, you know, domestically, we also try to seek opportunities, you know, internationally. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Well, and I think what's really interesting um, today amongst the three of you is that the commodity focus is quite varied, which is. Um, you know, we should get some interesting discussion in terms of the various commodities and regions and um, investments focuses and stuff. So I guess, so to kick things off, where are you guys and um, China's other top resources investors currently investing? So is the focus currently still really on an international focus or domestic? And if it is international, where are you really looking um, for opportunities? Maybe Kevin, right now you're you're in Ghana, um, so maybe you you can kick us off with with that discussion. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I forget to introduce Chiffon Gold. Uh, when we brief myself, Chiffon Gold is a uh, uh, listed uh, gold mining company uh, in Shanghai Stock Exchange, and uh, uh, it's it focus on the uh, gold mining and uh, operations. And uh, uh, currently, the company has, uh, you know, uh, one flagship mine uh, in Laos, which is called Sebon. And also, it owns uh, uh, three gold mines and uh, one uh, zinc lead mine in China. Uh, the company uh, uh, already have a three years uh, strategy, uh, which will focus on the you know uh, uh, gold production expansion, and uh, to achieve our uh, uh, target, uh, we will you know uh, focus our business development in overseas. Uh, the uh, reason is uh, quite simple. Uh, it's because you know uh, in China uh, the uh, uh, gold gold resources uh, is uh, uh, you know. Uh, close to uh, uh, exhausting and also uh, the cost in China uh, for gold mining is also high, especially for, you know, uh, uh, merge and acquisition. So we will focus on some, uh, you know, uh, uh, major uh, gold producing countries with uh, stable uh, policies and uh, uh, politicals. Uh, yeah, uh, so our focus area will be uh, South uh, East Asia countries, uh, which is, we already have a very good base uh, in uh, uh, Laos. Um, so um, the second area now we will focus is uh, West, uh, West Africa. So uh, uh, where I'm staying now, uh, we will uh, try to uh, find a, a, a new opportunity uh, in Ghana. 
So uh, I, I also spent actually you know half of a year in this country uh, to looking for a new uh, opportunity and also discuss discuss with the uh, you know uh, uh, local gold mines to seeking for uh, opportunity. Yeah, so uh, I think that this uh, our uh, uh, answer to your question, and also uh, besides of this, we will also uh, uh, you know uh, um, interested in other areas. Uh, but important uh, uh, criteria for us is, uh, you know, we need uh, uh, to invest a country with, uh, you know, a stable uh, mining policy and also a stable uh, 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 political. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Great. And um, as we can come back to kind of the, the risk management in terms of um, different dur jurisdictions, but maybe George, if you'd like to kind of Give us some insight into into um, where Huayu is looking. Uh, thank you, Amy, for the question, and also uh, today uh, talking this or uh, taking this kind of a topic and answer this question. Actually, uh, not only myself but also Greg, my old friends, and also uh, uh, Kevin, my brothers. They have more more insights than me sometimes. You know, in this kind of question. Uh, also, uh, first, Huayu, as you know, Huayu, what we did, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, Huayu is a high-tech company to uh, focus on producing the cathode and precursor material for the EV battery industry. But what really Huayu do is mine, do the mining, to mining the uh, EV metals and then produce the EV materials. So. In that case, we mining the EV metals. So where we mining nowadays for the copper and cobalt is from DRC. For the nickel and cobalt is from Indonesia. And also from, for the lithium, nowadays we got a, a project participation uh, in DRC, uh, in South America, and also in Australia. So we uh, get a very business in various places. If we're talking about a, a risk, so where is the risk? So uh, in terms of uh, a juristic risk and also a country risk, I, my personal view is uh, uh, always it's a balance. When we do the business, especially for the mining business, and even uh, the uh, manufacturing business outside of China because we have a different understanding about the culture, about the legal system, and also about the political system. So uh, when we do something, maybe we, we were not in the right way to follow the shoot. So in, in that case, when we say, okay, there's no risk. Actually, if we do the things in the right way, to manage the things in the right way, we can mitigate what's the difficulties we can meet. No matter in DRC or in the you know, or in the Indonesia or South America, there are some different issues in different countries. For example, in South America, South America, the labor issues. In, in, in the Indonesia, uh, some nowadays is heavily involved. Nowadays, getting better. COVID-19 issues. Uh, uh, and also in Africa, uh, people will say, okay, the different legal system and different culture. So in, in that case, so uh, uh, we really, really want to do, really want to do is to get deep understanding the culture, the political system, and the legal system to learn from the local people, especially for the international uh, at the one, uh, advanced uh, advisors. For example, we will have a local legal team and local, local legal advisors. Uh, for the labor and union issues, let's have some guys, they get familiar with the rules and the, the behavior people will do. So in that case, we believe for each country, similar in China, Nowadays, we're sitting in Zhejiang province. When we go to the Xinjiang, when we go to Nemongo, even when we go to uh, uh, Liaoning province, 
people have a different habit, different dialogue. So mm. in that case, we'll, we'll improve ourselves, the skill set of ourselves to understand the people, to have a real communication. That's the first. Second, have a good capacity of uh, benefit to the different stakeholder. Uh, that's uh, what we do say, we try to set up a win-win situation for different parties and to have a different density and the, the same group to win in the business, to win in the better life. So in that case, we don't believe with anything we can do when people are willing to do to get it. So I don't know, is that nice answer to you or uh, is it's change? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's great. And I definitely, I have some questions afterwards, um, but I, I certainly want to bring Greg in as well to the discussion um, to see, you know, how he, how are you managing um, these types of risks? What sort of opportunities are you looking for? Um, how does it all fit together? Hello, Amy. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, you know, I just want to add a little bit about, uh, you know, last question, mm -hmm. you know, and I would say that, uh, you know, China is investing everywhere. And in the meantime, however, uh, the Chinese, you know, I think many Chinese major in SOEs, for example, mm -hmm. still probably more interesting uh, than any other, you know, uh, in the regions investing in African mining, uh, you know, sector. I just came up with some numbers by reading report, you know, recently. Uh, about a decade ago, uh, in around 2010, you know, China investors uh, controlled only about 10 mining operations on the uh, African continent. Mm -hmm. And, but this figure, you know, rose to at least 35 in 2020. So, so uh, in other words, that in the last, uh, in a decade, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, major operation controlled by Chinese investors, you know, has increased for, for you know, three folds. So I would say that, uh, you know, why China interest in mineral resource in the African continent, it's how that is motivated. Of course, you know, I think if we can, because reasons, if I list, number one reason that is continual strong growth you know, in the Chinese manufacturing constructions in the sectors. That's required, you know, the security of the supplies of the mineral resources or mineral commodity, uh, you know, products. I think second is that probably, you know, what the domestic, you know, opportunity for the mining uh, investments, very, very limited, you know, because of several in the reasons it's a very in you know, a lack of high quality mineral resources, and also very strict uh, environment policies uh, enacted recent years, and of course you know they also have the very inefficient management of the uh, mining rights. So there's many many you know, issues in domestic uh, in wise. So that's why I still feel that uh, even they invest everywhere, but Africa is probably the, the number one you know, destinations for the many Chinese investors. And also, you know, I think we know that China has been very active last decade in Australia, but I think that's had been cooled down the last couple of years. It's, you know, that's not only uh, the impact of the pandemic issues, but also between the two countries, you know, uh, tensions, you know, developed in the last, uh, you know, few years. So, you know, I think that uh, the you know you know third major reason is that the uh, Belt and Road you know initiatives. So Chinese you know BRI, which is a very important starting point or the baseline for the uh, about 140 countries that's involved in the uh, you know BRI. So, but the resource rich in, in regions, probably Africa is number one. And also, I think uh, by you know considering this international geographic, uh, you know, geopolitical relationships, I think probably Africa is still is going to be the number one top uh, in the continent for Chinese to, to invest. 
Interesting. And um, so uh, a few of you noted that um, M&A was kind of one of the main, I guess, avenues for investment. And I know there's been news recently about Zijin um, and, and an acquisition there. George, I'm not sure. I mean, you're, you're ex Zijin. Um, so I'm not sure if you can comment on that or kind of look at maybe the various um, investment strategies. So whether it's M&A or um, direct investment, you know, where do you see ch um, China's investors preferring to, to, uh, to invest? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. So uh, when I working in GG mining, nowadays working in bio cobalt, even before we working in China Min Metals Corporation uh, for eight years. Uh, when we do the, the uh, corporate development, we always think about two legs. Number one, we will think about investment in domestic. Number two, we will think about investment overseas. But whatever we think about overseas and domestic, there is two alternatives. One is m and Another one is, there is uh, we say, uh, is uh, organic growth. It's, as you mentioned, it's a direct investment. We call m and is a non-organic growth. So, uh, if theoretically, m and non-organic growth, of course, is quicker, but a lot of challenging. In terms of direct investment, organic growth uh, investment in, through our, uh, our own growth, it will be uh, uh, more mature, more comfortable, but slowly, more stable. The different company have a different strategy. For example, originally when we have, uh, when I'm working in the gold industry, Gold Corp, nowadays it's merged with another company. Gold Corp is a typical uh, model of uh, direct investment. They find some uh, uh, opportunity, but they will build and operate it. That's Gold Corp. And for another company, for example, Barrick, they always think about m and That's because John Fountain nowadays says another guy. So mm -hmm. uh, even still think about m and That's because they get a good target and a good action plan and a good results. But whatever m and and direct investment, both are important are important for the company to have a growth, to have a good development. When we do m and we think about uh, consolidation. We think about the risk to be mitigated. Always think about, we, do we capable enough to eat it up? Uh, when we do the direct investment, we'll think about, okay, uh, do we have a uh, uh, patient enough to wait him for another wave. You know, mm -hmm. mining industry always up and down, up and down. When we catch up an up, up trend, you get a rapid development. And when, we, when you go in the go in the down trend, if you think about a direct investment, it's comfortable. If you think about MA in the down trend, that was a disaster. For example, one company buy, pay a huge price to buy something, but in the coming five years, the price going down dramatically. They get a serious problem. So, all, all, lots of story. For example, one company, they buy oil and gas 10 years ago. That oil and gas price is very much high. And then after three years, oil and gas price get in job and the company get a collapse and have to sell corporate assets to pay the debt. So, and uh, another company, uh, of course, they, that's kind of story, a lot of story. So whatever you choose, M&A or 
direct investment, it depends. Demands, uh, depends two things. One is uh, the management team. What are your, what's your skill set? The second depends on your own assets portfolio. If your own, as, your own assets portfolio is strong enough, of course, direct in, investment is also very good. So that's my short answer. Thank you. And Kevin, is it the same uh, for you, do you find? Yeah, thank you, Amy. Uh, you know, from my observation, I, I found a very interesting caricature or the chain of, uh, you know, Chinese company uh, investing in overseas resources. So I, it seems always, you know, there's one kind of uh, resources where be very popular in one time period. For example, uh, okay, in the history, we ever see the surge of the, uh, uh, you know, acquisition of the iron ore of the Chinese company. And also just uh, George mentioned the oil and gas and the coal. And uh, another time period is uh, maybe uh, for copper. And then nowadays uh, it seems uh, Chinese company very interested in the, uh, uh, you know, lithium and uh, for some, you know, uh, new uh, energy resources. So that's his uh, quite interesting uh, caricature. Uh, that's, I think, is also, you know, uh, one of the major reasons that a Chinese company maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, fail uh, in the uh, acquisition because they always push up the resources price and uh, in finally they, find, they will find they, you know, acquire uh, the resources at its uh, peak price. So that's is, uh, my observation, uh, yeah. Um, but re regarding to gold, uh, I, I think uh, Chinese company, Chinese gold companies, you know, they are, you know, a little bit, you know, uh, 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 you know, keep interest in the uh, overseas uh, uh, mining industry. So uh, you rare to see there is some big fails in gold mining industry for the MA. So, uh, yeah, my view is, you know, um, if Chinese company, you know, can, you know, uh, always, you know, keep its a uh, long strategy and uh, keep watching on the uh, uh, overseas opportunities. And uh, just as George said, be patient enough, but not just, you know, uh, uh, you know, all those companies surge come out, you know, for one kind of resources which will be, uh, you know, uh, more, you know, idea or say more, you know, uh, rationale for the, those Chinese company in the global market. Yeah, I think that's my, my view on this. Yeah, thank you. Great, thank you. And Greg, do you want to pitch in with your view as well here? Sure. <clears throat> thank you, Amy. Uh, you know, I think both George and Kevin covered very, uh, very well. Uh, you know, I just offer some of my experiences with Han King. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, both are very right in terms of this, uh, the choices of investment uh, route or, or, you know, uh, you know uh, in method. But I would say that uh, the most important thing that you, when you try to choose one or, or, or another is to consider that if you can best to achieve or the best opportunity or best chance to achieve your strategic goals. You know, for the, some major, you know, company, for example, you know, their, you know, growth plan, uh, you know, could be very different from, you know, smaller ones, you know, particular cars is so different from, you know, the junior ones. And they all have different uh, kind of route and methodologies in terms of the growth, you know, uh, growing their businesses. So, you know, for the, uh, for the Chinese company, for example, you know, I would say that the, you know, MA or, you know, direct is not really a critical, you know, di you know difference. As a more critical difference for the Chinese mining investors are more related to the controlling interest. You know, for example, a lot of the major mining company, even as early stage mining companies, I think they're all seeking in controlling in, in the interest. They try to uh, be in, in control. 
I think uh, you know for this certain uh, some other it might come in you know, as a more you know uh, fund related. It's not really necessarily operational based. They probably you know more interested about returns on capital or return on investments. So they probably just pay you know just look at the how the margin is you know what that uh, how that can you know sustain. So you know I think this all depends on how you can achieve your strategic goals. Thank you. Great, and uh, that's really interesting, and it, and it definitely brings me into my next question. So, I mean, bringing in that idea of how how will you achieve your strategic goals? What sort of criteria do you put onto an investment when you're looking at various opportunities? Um, Greg, do you want to kind of continue on with that? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, they're so complex, you know, this evaluation of the, you know, investments or, you know, uh, projects or assets, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many different ways. That's also because, you know, I think the number one consideration, uh, consideration is your company or your shareholders or your management, you know, strategic goals, how you position you strategically in this, you know, in this, uh, you know, uh, in the business, and how you project your your business profile in the next five or ten years. So that's the number one consideration first, because you know, you know, when you are, you know, making that strategic position, you already have a you know, systematic uh, thinking about your future, about what you, you know, you want to, or you know, where you want to, you know, to be in the next few years. Uh, and more technically, you know, we have to also consider other things, you know, like, uh, you know, geopolitical environments, you know, elephant countries, you know, to, to hunt for elephants, and uh, friendly mining investment, uh, you know, jurisdictions, and uh, good reasonable communities, mm -hmm. and labor unions, so many issues, you know, to make you the decision. But for the mining in, in companies, number one, you know, besides, you know, if everything fit into the, you know, strategic, uh, you know, framework, I think the second thing is we have to consider the resource quality. I think the grid and the mining process and conditions, that's probably very, very you know, critical, you know, to look at. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. And George, um, what are your thoughts on that? Thank you. So, uh, I, I, first, I fully agree with Greg. Yeah, Greg, what, what Greg talked, we fully agree. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we made a, another two additional points. One additional point is uh, when we think about investment, the first criteria uh, uh, is uh, to fit the strategy, developing the strategy of, uh, of the company uh, to fit uh, you know, uh, people uh, or people have a five year, five year plan, and even ten years uh, thinking, ten years idea to fit the strategy. In the uh, uh, this the uh, first one, we will think about the second. The new investment will improve the assets portfolio of the company. Uh, not only fit the strategy, but also to improve, to upgrade the company's portfolio and the quality and economic performance. That's the number two. Uh, also, another two points is they have to fit the trends of this uh, the, where the project sitting in. For example, nowadays with our talking about the carbon, carbon footprint and uh, carbon neutralization and carbon uh, emission. So that's the development trends of this world. Need to, need to follow this uh, trends to make the right investment. That, in that case, we can think about another, not only the current economic performance, but also in the long run, is make a route, do the things right, do 
not only do the right thing, but also do the things right. But do the right thing is more important. The right thing means to fit, to follow the trends, to fit the strategy, to improve our uh, assets portfolio. That's do the right thing, the first one. So uh, this, uh, for example, nowadays we do the battery recycling. Battery recycling, uh, in another word, in people say uh, open, urban uh, mining. The used battery, we get the battery back and then uh, dis uh, disassembling, and then we get the nickel, cobalt, these things back to the industry. We, got a, we produce uh, nickel sulfate. We produce cobalt sulfate. We produce this and carbonate. And then we put into the uh, process to produce the material again. So in that case, why we need to do the battery recycling? One is uh, because of environmental issues, because of uh, the uh, carbon, double carbon issues, but also the battery law ask people, even in Europe, battery law ask people, if you need to produce new EV, if you would like to use a EV battery, how much materials is from the recycling? It's already not, it's not regulation, it's a law. So we have to follow. So uh, uh, while you nowadays pay a lot of attention, well, actually we have a, a reasonable uh, scale of a battery recycling business. So this is uh, uh, another idea. So mm -hmm. okay, what do we will follow? To follow, to do the right thing, follow the right trends. So when we do the investment. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, if, okay, when we think of select right thing to do, okay, how to do things right? That's another criteria when we think about the investment. How to do things right? We need to coordinate. We, we need to think about the best interest, not only to the shareholder, but also to the stakeholder. For example, the governor, the, uh, the, uh, the central government, the provincial government, the local community, and our own shareholder. So do things right. To think about in that case, at the end of the day, to contribute our efforts to the improvement of the quality of the life of the people's life, people including everyone. At the same time, to get a good benefit, good return for the shareholder. That's how to do things right. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Kevin, do you want to bring us in um, a little bit about your um, criteria in terms of investment as well? Yes, uh, thank you. I think uh, Greg and uh, George and, uh, already covered the most of the criteria. I just uh, uh, have you know specific uh, uh, case about our company. Uh, we are very focusing. Our acquisition, uh, we are always along with our strategy. So uh, we, uh, you know, our, uh, you know, uh, current strategy is that we will expand the uh, production of the company to, you know, uh, 60 tons uh, in 2022. So uh, along with this strategy, so now we are focusing on, you know, uh, the uh, stage of, you know, production gold mines in the world. So the focusing uh, will help us, you know, to screen for the opportunities. Uh, because there are so many investment opportunity you will have, uh, you know, uh, every time period. And also, you know, we're focusing on gold and, uh, you know, uh, focusing on some uh, uh, stable jurisdiction. So our criteria is, you know, uh, always along with our strategy. And uh, maybe uh, in, in near future, we will also consider to build our portfolio. Like George mentioned, we will have production, uh, mine will have, uh, you know, development mine. We also will have uh, feasibility study mine. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe in near future. And uh, along all those uh, criteria, uh, Greg and uh, uh, George mentioned, we have uh, another criteria, which is uh, we will focus on the uh, payback period. 
uh, you know, uh, as you know, uh, the overseas uh, investment is always, you know, along with uh, all kinds of risk. You need a, a, a relative uh, a rapid uh, payback period. And also you need to uh, think about the, you know, uh, the way uh, you quit the country. So uh, that's what I uh, contributed to this uh, topic. Thank you. Great, thank you. And uh, this is something that George started to bring into the conversation. So um, looking at the trends of decarbonization and um, ESG focused investing, um, how do you see this impacting what you're seeing in the market? Um, what are the impacts, you know, how is, how is uh, the decarbonization, whether it's through the metals or the mines that you're looking at, um, you know, what, what are some of the interesting trends that you're seeing in terms of your, um, you know, your operations or your investments? Um, maybe Kevin, if you wanna start us off here. I know you're, you, you're operating in the gold space, but I'm not sure um, in terms of, you know, uh, decarbonizing mine sites and that sort of thing um, has been started to come into the conversation a bit more. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, yes, we, uh, the company also, you know, began to, you know, uh, looking at this, uh, uh, you know, uh, important uh, trend, which is, you know, we, we will uh, pay additional uh, attention to the, you know, uh, carbon footprint and, uh, you know, carbon uh, uh, um, emission uh, reduction. Uh, we, we will know, you know, we, we know that uh, gold production is, you know, higher energy consumption uh, uh, industry. Uh, I have a number for this industry, you know, uh, to uh, uh, refine each gold, it need to, you know, uh, consumption like uh, um, 85, 85, 85 uh, million uh, KW, K, uh, KWH, uh, for each tons of uh, uh, gold, or say it will uh, emission for uh, uh, 26,000 tons of uh, uh, you know, uh, carbon into the uh, air. So uh, if, you know, um, in one day we have to face the pressure of, you know, uh, the uh, uh, carbon neutralization, we have to, you know, consider for some alternative or say, you know, optimistic uh, to our process to reduce the carbon emission. Uh, for my, you know, view, because, you know, uh, I have limited uh, knowledge in this industry. For my view, uh, maybe we have uh, um, two directions to think about this. First, when you invest in a new uh, 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 gold mining, uh, you will consider uh, you know, uh, where it is any opportunity for, you know, uh, new energy, like uh, uh, hydropower or say, you know, other, you know, wind power, solar power to replace, you know, the uh, energy consumption from the grid. This is the first thing. The second is we should, you know, look at the uh, processing itself to identify the opportunities to reduce the uh, carbon emission. For example, I think there is uh, many, you know, uh, with the heat we can use uh, in the, you know, uh, processing and also other, you know, other, other you know, uh, opportunity to reduce the carbon emission. Uh, we still yet uh, not, you know, uh, pay many study uh, in this area, uh, but I think in the future, this will be, you know, uh, quite important work for the company. If you want to expand, you have to think about this, uh, you know, topic seriously. Absolutely. Yes. Great. And, uh, and Greg, just to bring you in here, um, you mentioned yes. that, that you're, um, you know, you, you focus on nickel, which um, is certainly a, a growing part of the, uh, you know, EV story. What sort of trends are you seeing in terms of decarbonization and ESG as it relates to the work that, that Hanking is doing? 
Yes, uh, we have uh, started, uh, you know, uh, you know, had, you know, we, you know, we did have a very complete review on all uh, possibilities of improving our operations in terms of the replace uh, in the DC and also elect, you know, electrical generation process. And uh, basically in the most, uh, in the near term, well, you know, what we will try to do, you know, try to utilize more gases instead of coals to, uh, you know, uh, you know, replace uh, this, uh, you know, you know, clean energy, uh, you know, to coals, you know, to, to reduce some, you know, emissions at the mine size. You know, second is that uh, we try to use more, uh, you know, other renewable resources, you know, to partially, you know, replace, you know, some of the powers, you know, we are using, you know, from the, uh, you know, uh, electric grid. And locally, you know, you know, we also try, in you know, a third thing we try to do that, try to using the uh, more hydrogen driven, uh, you know, trucks, you know, to have, to, to serve for the short term uh, in transportation purposes. So that's basically first stage, where we, you know, what we try to try, you know, see what happens. And, and hydrogen is certainly uh, one of the, the kind of interesting new, uh, trends that's certainly coming up in the decarbonization uh, focus and discussion. And um, George, I suppose to close things off, you brought us into this discussion on decarbonization. Um, do you have any kind of final thoughts regarding, uh, um, you know, where things are moving? Yeah, thank you. I think the time is uh, almost up. I will make a very quick and short comments. Uh, we, uh, you know, in China, we say Shuang Tan, that's double carbonization, double carbonization, and EU Shuang Gao, that's, that means one uh, first need to improve the ecology. And, and the second, we need to have a double high. Double high means uh, first, the high quality development of the economy system. Second, is a high quality life to be chosen for the people. So why we, we, I mean, uh, I would like to say Shuang Tan and EU Shuang Gao. That's because they come from the decarbonization. The last decarbonization will make the Shuang Tan and EU Shuang Gao become into the truth. And also its influence to our industry is that's very much positive. One, that's because the EV industry will get a surge, surge of the EV demands and the development. Second, it will be very strong demand for the EV metals. The second, very positive. The third is encouraging Huayu to develop our own high technology to lower the cost, to have a short uh, flow sheet and also to have high quality products to feed the industry. So we, the decarbonization, sometimes we see some difficulties, but, but it's uh, very good and very positive to this society. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, do any of our panelists have any any final final words on this? We we are kind of nearing the hour mark, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, but yeah, if, if we're all good, then um, I'd like to thank everyone for taking part in in this discussion today. It's been very interesting to hear about each individual company and um, kind of the the focuses that you that you all have, investment criteria, that sort of thing. So. Thank you very much. Um, we hope to see everybody soon at a live event, probably in 2022, uh, once we're allowed to travel and stuff again. So yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Thank you Amy. Thank you, George. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah.